Who else but Master Chief for $100? Halo Hype! We're on. All right. <laughs> Are we? Okay, yeah. cool. What's up, everybody? I am your waifu. I mean, I'm waifu. And uh, I'm going to be showing off some Halo Infinite today with Bry. Hello. I'm Bry Nato. First things first, though, this is going to be all missions, no tank gun. So I'm going to be showing off what I'm not going to be doing <laughs> because uh, for very obvious reasons. So this is the third level in the game. You can go up to this little ship here and grab this gun. <laughs> and. Uh, you have an unlimited ammo tank that shoots from your feet. So for very obvious reasons, that makes the combat not as fun. So with this category, the, the goal is to be more of a traditional Halo run where you don't skip the whole game and you don't just annihilate everything with this tank gun. So with that being said, we're gonna go back to the main menu and get the game started. Good luck, dude. Thank you, thank you. Um, normally we would skip this intro cutscene, but I just love Echo 216, and he's so stoked to have us aboard that I just kind of got to show it. <laughs> also, I want to give a big shout out to all the developer love that came in to donate for this game. There was a ton of donations from 343, so that was really cool to see. Oh, yeah. And uh, in case you were wondering, we are going to be playing on a down patch version, so we're going to have all the crazy broken tech all over the place. Yes! <laughs> Yes! Yes! We're going home! <laughs> very, very, very stoked. He's excited to play down patch. <laughs> Welcome back, Chief. Welcome back, Chief. Power I had into your suit. And, uh, yeah, time's gonna start at the end of this little I'm tutorial sure section where we uh, learn matrix. how to look up, down, left, and right, just like we I did when we first played CE way back in the day, look before up. I was even born, so... <laughs> Now let's look down. Good that job. Fine. This is the hardest part of the run. Let's try right. I got it. Come on. <laughs> and, and now left. left. Perfect. Your visor feed and motor So this run is uh, really dense. It's got a lot of cool stuff like going on, and in your hands. it has some great pacing to it. At the very end of the first level of the game, you're going to see Stay a calm. really, really cool Stay trick that's going to have us yeeting across outer space inside this little container ship. And, uh, but before we get there, we're going to have a ton of really cool grapple hook movement, which is the main thing. And the time is going to start in three, well, actually, when, after uh, this load screen, in like three, two, one, go. And I already bombed. <laughs> we're getting out of the way early. Yep, yep, yep. So, Halo Infinite, the newest rendition of the Halo franchise. Now with 100% more grapple hook. Basically, this run can boil down to grapple hook the speed run, and I love it. It's got all sorts of really cool movement where we're doing these epic slides out of these grapple hooks, and it's just a really, really good time. Yeah, uh, the, the best decision that 343 made when they when they developed the campaign is they give, you, they give you the grapple hook from the start. So basically the entire game you get this thing and it's really, uh, it's really, really well tuned. It's extremely intuitive to use. It's like just as elastic as you might expect. And you can kind of use it to slingshot yourself around corners or, you know, like over a ledge or anything like that. It feels really, really good to use. And we're going to see a lot of uh, movement and uh, abuse with that through this run. So, yep. Just about anything that you would hope that you can do with the grapple hook, you can do with the grapple hook from uh, throwing fusion coils to pulling stuff towards you to blowing out jackal shields, whatever you want to do. Um, but what it's mostly used for is that really fast movement. Uh, this game has a cool slide where if you're sprinting and then you press the crouch button, you slide. And whatever speed you have before you do this is transferred to the slide. You actually get a little bit of a speed increase too when you hit it. So you're going to be seeing me doing a lot of forward grapples into slides and even doing a thing called a double slide where I jump and then sprint and crouch again when I land to be able to slide many times in a row. We're going to be going really fast like that. But first off, we this level, it's usually kind of long. You got a big section near the middle where you're supposed to do all sorts of combat. But, you know, Chief's a little upset at the store. You know, he's just going to punch his way into outer space. <laughs> And that's actually a trick that stems from a lot of other Halo games where 
if you punch a door, you can actually like do damage to it and you'll slowly go further and further through the collision until you go so far to the other side that you end up loading the other part of the level. And in this instance, it just happens to be after that section where you're supposed to kill all those enemies. So you can go and hit the trigger that you would normally get after killing all those enemies. And now we're backtracking through the level, through the part we were just at. But now the game thinks, wow, he killed all those enemies. So now we're going toward the end of the level. We're picking up this fusion coil. Fusion coils, arguably the second most important thing in the run besides the grapple hook. And that's because when you add a fusion coil and a grapple hook together, you get some crazy stuff. So here's the first big trick. It's called a Worship Gabrak and the Coil Launch. And uh, well, you'll see what it is. Hopefully I get a first try. That looks good. Oh, that was a really good launch. Nice. Very good. Wow. That was like <laughs> Okay, so that was like really scary. I was afraid that was gonna go super wrong, but we're we're good, we're good. Yo, are you gonna uh it'll be, oh, it'll be okay. Okay. Inside, inside, inside. Inside. I forgot you had a grapple for a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, we're good, we're good, we're good. So basically how that works is the fusion coils have collision on the top and bottom of them. Um that stays active when you grapple hook the, the fusion coil. So if you jump above the fusion coil and pull it into you with a grapple hook, it actually collides with the player. It gets like inside it halfway and then shoots it the other direction. And that can give you a ton of speed and shoot you all the way into the sky. But since we're inside the building, we set up against the door frame so that we launch up and then bounce off the door frame and shoot all the way across the room. That one there saves like 30 seconds if done like perfectly. And that was pretty solid. That was a really good one. And I'm, I'm glad because if you miss it, you just fly off into the abyss and die. So uh, it could have been a lot worse. Pretty good taste of what's to come too. Yeah. So uh, for just a quick little, like, I guess like lore dump for, for Halo Infinite, um, a big direction that 343 wanted to take this game was kind of a return to the series roots. So kind of again, like in CE, you find humanity on its back foot. Uh, we're discovering like a new Halo ring and we're gonna go land there to help uh, the Marines that have crash landed there fight back against a, uh, I guess an offshoot or a you know specific, specific like uh, yeah the banished the banished is what they're, is what they're yeah. called yeah yeah not not the not the covenant this time but the banished and mm -hmm. so they're fighting the war there and we're gonna go we're gonna go help them out so um, yeah you'll see that a lot of uh, with a lot of the games like themes and everything like that uh, uh, Cortana is dead it's another thing. Uh, to another, another part of the Lord. It too, happens off camera. So. Yeah, happens off. Or, yeah, happens off camera. And uh, yeah, this whole this whole game is kind of like if you took uh, the second mission from Halo CE, which was called Halo, and kind of expanded it into an entire game. It, yeah. kinda, it really does play like that. I feel like Halo, but it's the whole game. Also, I really want to point out that scene. I love that scene because Master Chief blows up this whole ship by himself, does this like epic badassery, and then he's just floating in space and doesn't even call for help. Yeah. <laughs> he's just chilling there. He's like, you know, if I get found, that's cool, but. I'm kind of chilling either way. And uh, he only gets picked up because Echo 216, the pilot, comes and saves him. So now we're heading into Foundation, which is the second level. Um, this level is a little bit more laid back than the last one. It's not quite as broken, but it does get to showcase the movement a lot more. You're going to see a lot of really nice grapple slides and a little bit of optimized combat at the end. It does, it does have one coil launch in it, as most of the levels do, thankfully. Um, but for the most part, we're just going to be optimizing our way through this level pretty much normal. You know, not a, totally annihilating the game. But that'll come, don't worry. It'll, def it'll definitely come. Yeah, um, the, the, speaking of the slide, you're going to be seeing that a lot here. There's actually quite a few different slide mechanics, such as like curb slides or drop slides that all kind of depend on like how you interact with the, 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 the angle you take interacting with the ground like uh, on contact after like an aerial maneuver. A lot of those aren't going to be super, oh, a lot of those aren't, aren't going to be super relevant in this. Oh, here, here's this coil launch, right? Yes, sir. I'm going to stand on top of this coil and hopefully get a medium launch. That was a little short, but that's okay. Like it's uh, just enough, right? Yeah, it should give me just enough to be able to grapple up here. We can skip going around here if we coil launch to the top. That's a lot better than the alternative. It, coil launches are really, really finicky. Uh, the physics in Halo games are generally deterministic, meaning that as long as you do the exact same thing every time, the exact same thing should happen. But coil launches are so precise that it's really hard to be able to get that level of consistency. So usually either what happens there happens, or you'll launch so fast that you fly into the ceiling and take like 10 years to fall down. 
<laughs> right, and so just touching back on the slides too, a lot. the main thing that we're just going to be seeing is just kind of grappling in the sliding as well as the, the double slides that uh, Waifu touched on. Uh, the rest of the slides kind of get just superseded by the amount of grapple movement that's available to you all the time, and those other ones you're only really going to see in like multiplayer and competitive play. But yeah. Yep. And uh, here we have a nice little elevator, which is a perfect time for a couple donations. Did you do that? No. We have $100 from 343 Ciliex. Nice. As excited as Echo 216 to see just how fast you can save humanity. Good luck, Waifu. Thank you. We also have $50 from Chris. Much love and support from us at 343. You guys are awesome. That voice is Cortana. You got quite a few more. We have $100 from Pro Ace Joker. What did you say? Did someone say Halo Runs. Legendary is better than Easy? <laughs> also, when is Halo Infinite 100% run, Raifu? I assume HEDQ 2013, right? Sure. Awesome. Thanks so much for representing the Halo community and speedrunners. Good luck with the run today, even though you won't be needing it since all your runs are amazing anyways. Heart Joker. Get time for like one more. We have $25 from Sunbro Sunshine. Halo was my first love, and we get such a great runner to show off this great game. Go show the Banish what you're made of, Waifu. All right, let's do it. So here we're going to just go and do a little bit more grapple movement. The lore here is we're on our way to go pick up the weapon, which is just the code name for Cortana 2. Um, Cortana's dead, but we, uh, on our mission, need a weapon, and it's plot twist, it's just Cortana again. So we're going to go pick her up here. And on the way, we're doing a little bit of some semi-intended skips with the grapple hook. The grapple hook is super well uh, developed and like totally, completely thought out. It, it's the best feeling thing in the whole game. But it does kind of feel like sometimes the level design is like, are you supposed to grapple this? And this is a great example of this. These, there's usually these bridges that you have to uh, bring up so that you can walk across these, and there's a required combat section right in the middle. But you can just grapple hook across them, and it is much, much faster. So we're going to be making our way towards the end of the level here. Oh. oh. And the game crashed. OK. We're getting it out of the way early, yep. like we said. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fun. <laughs> And that is why I will not be doing a 100% run. <laughs> but yeah, as far as grapples go too, and like you were talking about the level design there, I really like how the, the, the player agency that you're given just to kind of to determine like how you want to move through the level with, that, with a tool like that. That's really cool. Yeah, so. for sure. It definitely gives you a whole new level of freedom that makes the game feel really refreshing compared to a lot of the other Halo games. Anyway, we probably have time for donations. Yeah, we got time up, for like right? go for one it. or yeah. two donations. Yeah. yeah. All right, we have $15 from Windrider Shiva. There once was a man named Halo, who saved the Halo from the Halo. He shot the Halo into the Halo and boarded the train headed for Halo. <laughs> okay, that sure was a donation I just got. <laughs> we have $25 from Jeremy. Let's send doctors to, without borders to space so they can help John Halo do his job. Hype! Hype! This isn't sending too far back, it looks like. No, not too bad. You can do, like, one more. All right, we have a $100 donation from Remy Jet. When you first saw a Halo speedrun, were you blinded by its majesty? <laughs> Paralyzed? Dumbstruck? Well, I was and still am every time. Good luck, Wifer Runs. Thank you. Yeah, so here we are, back at the same spot. And didn't crash, Pog. So, <laughs> yeah, like we said with the grapple, you can just do all sorts of stuff, and that's going to really be shown in this elevator room up ahead, where we're supposed to kill a brute and then uh, get a power seed and activate this elevator and go up. But instead, we're just going to grapple hook straight up the elevator. There are plenty of spots like that in this game where we could just bypass some stuff just by grappling around. It doesn't even really feel no. like cheating. So and they're I, even really speedrunning. I, I feel like, uh, and I feel like most people in their casual we playthrough, I mean, at least me, uh, uh, like at the very least attempted this. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, just, I, it's, I, it's, I it's almost it. inviting you to try it. Yeah, oh, yeah, really cool. So this section, we're going to be uh, getting our first little upgrade for our shields from a Spartan who was killed uh, by some banished soldier. 
Uh, her name is Benita Stone. And uh, shout out to Hark the Shark who made a really cool skip for this where you skip this 30 second cutscene by doing some module. crazy stuff where you grapple a box and then set it Let's up in the corner and throw a grenade and it pushes you out of bounds and it's really Access cool. It. Except for I timed it this is Spartan, and it's but slower. slower. <laughs> it's like two <laughs> seconds slower. It's very cool. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, it's a little bit slower so I'm not going to be doing it here. Also, it's way less safe. Because the Out of Bounds is not entirely the, the most uh, gameplay friendly area in the game. And that's going to be a that's going to be a familiar uh, I, I, I guess you'd say mechanic that you see over and over. We're going to be finding a, a dead Spartan, and we will get like some sort of ability or upgrade from them. We're not going to. There's uh, quite a few abilities that are available to the player uh, in the game, but we're only going to be focusing on a couple. So. Yeah, we're going to get like two of them. Yeah. And we're just going to upgrade those ones that we get quite a bit. And uh, in reference to the grapple as well, um, it is on a cooldown. That cooldown is referenceable in the bottom right corner. You'll see the little hook with the little, uh, yeah, the little icon charging right now. Uh, we will be able to upgrade that in the future, but for now, you can keep an eye on that just to know when it's going to be up. Yep. And uh, also, if you look at the crosshair, there's a little yellow dot that says uh, when you can grapple. Uh, don't listen to it. <laughs> it lies. Sometimes it'll grapple. Uh, when it says you can't, and sometimes it'll not grapple when it says you can't. But for the most part, it's pretty soft. So this section, we're just trying to kill all of the enemies as fast as possible so we can get the elevator to come. What is that run doing? So we get the elevator to come down, and then we can fight a boss. And it'll be our first boss of the run, first of quite a few. Get away! Go! No, you get away. <laughs> and the bosses in this game um, are essentially just uh, basically, just like uh, beefed up enemies with a with a bigger health pool. Yep, with a big um, old shield. Yeah, very difficult to kill on higher difficulties. Oh yeah, uh, I'm going to enjoy this. I think. Excuse me, sir. Well, this is easy. That's actually like pretty easy to die. Uh, there is a leveling system, our little RPG mechanic for your shield recovery, and like the damage your shield can take. And we're not going to be leveling it up at all. So especially near the end of the run you are taking a lot of damage where the game is probably expecting you to have a little bit more maximum HP. So that's the first boss dead. Uh, then we're going to head into the third level of the game, Outpost Tremonius, where we're going to be, like, once again, having to kill all the enemies before we can progress. But this time, there's going to be some phantoms involved. And phantoms are these dropships that drop off enemies, but they also count as enemies in this game. So you can't actually activate the cutscene that causes you to leave the area until the phantom despawns or you blow it up. So we're gonna be trying to do a little strat here where we line up the dialogue with where we are in the level so that we can get the phantoms to run into each other and explode. Um, Cause we don't really have any good ways of blowing up the phantoms. So if we don't get them to run into each other then we just kind of have to wait for it to despawn. It's like a 15 second time save, but it looks really funny. So hopefully I can get it. It's coming up here in just a second, so I'm gonna have to listen for it. Full of more monsters coming to kill us. We'll need to hurry somewhere to land. That should be good, and I'm gonna try to clear out all the other enemies in the meantime while they're flying towards each other. You'll tell if I get it because there will be a big flash bang. So flash warning. That looks good. Oh, what? There, there it is. <laughs> nice. Throwing flash. I love that. That's any any CS players? <laughs> that'll, that'll look a little familiar for you if you play CS. Excuse me, just gotta clean up the fodder now. So now it's not, if you get that strike, it actually makes the room no longer an auto scroller. Oh, and uh, so this, this uh, button has a cutscene attached to it where um, Cortana, the Cortana 2, the weapon, the is weapon. talking to uh, Echo 216, and they're all basically op introducing open world, and because we're about to get into the open world. But if you just quit to the main menu and load back in, it actually skips the cutscene, and that saves time even in real time, because the cutscene is really long. And there's going to be quite a few spots in the game where we do that. And I actually went through before GDQ, I'm like, which of these can I cut out? Like. I'll just do the ones that only save time in real time. And it turns out they all save time in real time. So I didn't get to cut any of them out, unfortunately. And just to be clear, uh, like most modern PC games, Halo Infinite is timed with the loading times removed. 
Uh, so anytime the game is loading, the timer is paused. Real time just refers to a timer that is never paused, that includes load. So you will often have strats that might be a little bit slower uh, RTA, but like faster with loads or movement. So yeah, that's just what we're referring to when we talk yep. about that. Yep, and now we're clearing out our first FOB, which uh, this game is open world, as some of you may know, but we don't really interact with many of the open world elements, except for this one. This one we absolutely have to. Uh, in order to progress the story, we have to clear this FOB. And I'm going to do a little trick here, um, like I did before, where I'm going to skip this cutscene. So once he says activate FOB golf, I can shoot this plasma coil, and the plasma coil has fire. Oh. And the fire will kill me after the cutscene starts, and it kills me just far enough into the cutscene that the game is like, okay, you watch the cutscene. So when I load back in after saving and quitting, um, the cutscene will be skipped. Nice. Which is really <laughs> nice because it saves like a minute because that cutscene is really long. She shows you the map and all this, like, look at all this open world stuff. And I'm like, weapon, this is a speed run. <laughs> I, I gotta go. I can't be sitting here dilly dallying all day. So. Ever since I was a kid, when I played the OG Halos, I always thought, man, it'd be so fun to be able to fly a pelican. And uh, my dream finally was realized when I played Halo Infinite. And <laughs> we found this trick where if you call down a pelican to drop off a vehicle for you, you can actually get in the pelican. Unfortunately, you can't fly it. But if you leave the game and then load back in, the pelican's pathing breaks and it just spawns in as a, as a vehicle. <laughs> so you can just get in it, and now you can fly it around. That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. So for some of the open world tra traversal here, we're going to be flying around in a pelican just like we always wanted to. Um, and I don't have a key bound for getting out of the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> One second, please. And it looks like you're picking up a, what's it called, a Spartan core here? Yes. Is that right? I am picking up a Spartan core, and that is going to be useful for upgrading my... Um, abilities. My abilities, yes. Yeah, Spartan cores are basically, those are just going to be the points that you're given to uh, spend on stuff. And so, yeah, I would imagine the first thing that you're going to be doing is probably related to your grapple cooldown. Oh, I did it. There you go. Nice. Very good. Now we're gaming. Are you also flying at a diagonal? Yes, Here, okay, I'm flying okay. at a diagonal because it flies slightly faster. Right, yeah, I remember that when, when, I, when I ran Halo 3. Yep. Okay. Yes. Um, so oh, now we're at the mission The Tower, right and there is a bit of dialogue that stops us from going up into the tower. This uh, elite Chadlock, absolute Chad, he uh, is going to just yell at us and be like, blah, 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 like you can't penetrate my tower, blah. blah. And uh, so what happens if you trigger the dialogue and then you just fly away? He shuts up and he's like, oh, he's gone. And then the dialogue is skipped and you can just continue on like normal. So now I gotta open up the security building and then get into the tower so we can save a Spartan. And he's gonna tell us like what's going on and what we need to do. Um, but in the meantime, we're just gonna be really collecting stuff and killing some enemies. So it'd be a great time for some donations. All right. We have $50 from Cubit. Halo Infinite developer here. I've been watching wow. every GDQ since 2015, and this is the first time a game I worked on is being featured. Oh, cool. Break my baby. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I just want to say, it is real. like, we've had so many 343 dev donations. This yeah, is it's really, really cool. It's really special. Thank you all so much. Yeah, thank you, thank you. You could do, like, one more. A huge shout out to the 343 devs for all the love. We have $72.74 from Uber Panzerhund. What's good, Brian Otto? Hey, Uber. Show him how we grapple on the frontier. <laughs> I love it. Actually, you can do one more. We have $25 from Knox Reggie. Been donating in the Halo block ever since I started watching GDQ in 2016. Gonna throw in another $25 if the crowd gives me a Halo hype! There we go, there we nice. go. Very nice. Yeah, so we, we showed up and turns out we're too late. We couldn't save the Spartan. He's got all his armor off. He's naked. <laughs> That's not good uh, because you're not supposed to get out of your armor. It's like a turtle out of a shell. Um, but we did get something out of it. We got a threat sensor. Basically, it gives us wall hacks. Um, unfortunately, not that useful. And the, the thing it's supposed to be used for is uh, the elites, the, the, the boss of this area specifically, is going to be an elite who's invisible. 
Wow. That's a revolutionary new thing for Halo. I'm pretty sure I don't think they've ever done it before. It is all leads. But uh, no, it's, it's a cool boss, and we're going to be using the environment a lot in order to uh, get him stuck and take out his shields fast with the right weapons and then blow him up with the rocket. Uh, fun fact about this area, this, this game uh, has somewhat of a, a memory leak sometimes, so if you're doing lots of runs in a, in a row, like many hours in a session, Sometimes you get to this point and all the enemies are T-posing. It's very intimidating. It, it makes the tower seem way more intimidating. It kind of matches the cutscenes, you know? Uh, and that means the game is going to crash. Oh. <laughs> so thankfully, we're not seeing that here because uh, that, that would be unfortunate. We got that restart out of the way already, so. Yeah, yeah, we got it out of the way, so there shouldn't, shouldn't be any issues now. He's still alive. So is this like a... I don't know, is this like a meta loadout, the, the Pulse Carbine and Rocket, or is that just... Mostly, that's just a setup for this boss okay. in particular. I was going to say, that'd be a weird, the be plas weird loadout. Yeah. yeah, the plasma weapons are really good against uh, shields, right. and then the Rocket is just, you know, blows stuff up. Right. So we kill them, and then we're on our way to the Excavation Site. Excavation Site's the next mission. Um, I should probably explain, we're running all missions. That's not any percent. What does that mean? Basically, all missions is we got to do all the missions. It uh, means we can't skip any of the missions because there are some skips in this game. Any percent, if you don't know, is like 27 minutes long. So it's very, very short. You skip right from uh, the FOB Golf that we did all the way to the road near the end of the game uh, by doing a trick called a Lunge Warp. But we're not going to do any of those in this category because we want to play every single mission. And correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, like I, I don't run this game, but I feel like the goal with all missions is to make a category that's more akin to like Vanished classic Halo runs. Like, yeah. Halo games before have been very, very linear and you have to play them start to finish. Yep, sure. exactly. So okay. the, the whole goal is like, you can do whatever you want when you're in the level. You just have to start each of them. So that means you got to see like the mission start screen or something akin to that, indicating okay. that you started the mission. Now that means that you just have to start it. You can finish it in however like way you want. And this mission is a great example of that because normally you have to go to this area and you know fight a boss and do all this stuff where you got to break these generators so that you can deactivate this drill and get inside. Um, but we're not going to do any of that because we're about to get our final Spartan core that we need to upgrade to the ground pound ability. Um, and that's going to make it a lot easier to go where we need to go. The ground pound is probably one of the more important things in the world because you can do stuff like this. <laughs> Basically, any part of the geometry where there are like several overlapping angles, you can find a good spot to chill in and grapple and ground pound slam in the little crevice there, and it'll push you underneath the map. So we're going to just skip this whole level by going right wow. to the floor and right to the end level trigger. Oh, wow. <laughs> Was that as easy as it looked? It looked that easy. is actually a pretty easy one. Okay. The, the second clip in there, sometimes your, your collision can randomly get like reassigned and it won't perfectly line up with your model uh, for Chief. And when that happens, that's a little scary. Okay, okay we're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when, when that happens, sometimes uh, that trick won't work, and you have to like kill yourself and respawn to reset your collision. Another but we lucked out. We didn't have to do that. So now we're in indoor out of bounds, which is a lot different <laughs> than out of war. Outdoor is out of bounds, and you're going to see a lot of this in the run um, because you know the ground pound is really efficient at getting you out of bounds. So I, I you would can imagine you have a lot of basic angles everywhere. and opportunities that you can. Yeah, with all know. this uh, elegant geometry all over the place. So. This oh my. <laughs> out of bounds while in bounds is quite scary because there are what are called FBX boundaries around everything. Um, FBX is basically just a file format name that's 3D models. Um, but the intended play space attached to every 3D model um, is really important because if uh, you leave the intended play space of any FBX, then your player model actually just gets stuck. You like soft lock in place. So you can't actually move and the only way to get out of it is to quit to the main menu and load back in, and that loses a bunch of time. So you want to make sure that you hug the walls and stay as close to the intended play area as possible when you're out of bounds. Oh, um, And sometimes you can go out of bounds without really going out of bounds like that, and that's, that's called a fusion coil pinch, which is super, super useful tech. Um, it's the prime way of going through walls horizontally. Um, basically what happens is in this version, in this version alone, if you grab a coil with 
the grapple hook, it becomes hard. And that means that you can't push it. Normally, like when you throw a coil down, you can like walk into it and push it around, cyber bully it, and it'll take its lunch money. But when you grapple it, it just stands its ground. It will not move. And because of that, you can throw it in the air and then it'll fall into you and push you through the collision. And that's a super consistent way to be able to get through horizontal walls. Because ground pound clips are really good for going through the floor, but they're not so good about going horizontally through stuff. So we just picked up the thruster. This is going to be super, super useful for these coil launches that we're going to be doing in a little bit here. Um, this level conservatory is actually quite a long level casually, but it's down to like three minutes now with all these crazy skips. Uh, that second, I did two coil pinches here. I did one through the little door and I did one through the glass. The one through the glass actually replaced the skip that we used to do with a coil clip which is where you would just do a coil launch and pray you go through the wall. <laughs> um, and that was originally found by Sasquatch Sensei, who hey. is known for running Halo 3. He was known for being GQ. a certified good dude, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolute fun. legend, so shout outs to him. Um, so I should probably talk about this hammer we picked up. It, it's a hammer, so it's really good at you know hammering things, but it also is the special hammer. It's one of these like RPG mechanic-esque uh, special weapons, and its special ability is it makes you move like 20% faster. And that's gonna make all of our slides and, and dashes and grapple hooks really, really fast. So we're gonna be carrying that throughout the whole run. The problem is it only does that if it has ammo left. So we can't use all of it willy-nilly. If we run out of ammo, then we don't have the speed increase. And there are several other variants of like these like powered up weapons throughout the game. Normally you have to kill like priority targets for them and stuff like that. I guess that one was just It's sitting, like a hidden item. That was just sitting around. Okay, side. I didn't know about that one. Yep. Cool. All right. It's pretty neat. And uh, this would be an excellent time for some donations. All right. We have $25 from preferred name slash alias. I'm going to do my best with this one. Call fucker now and get him in space. Yeah. I need to know what the weapon is doing in space in green armor. <laughs> I appreciate the commitment there, Devil. I did my best. That's all I can do. Very nice. You can do one more. We have $25 from Mark Elling. 343 Dev here. I actually fought for the prison tower to be enterable before you clear the lockdown, which wasn't even that hard without fancy tricks. But it got vetoed by the higher ups, sadly. Sag. <laughs> Alright, so you find some hunters here. These guys, uh, you gotta hit them in the gooey bits to do damage to them, really. Or you could just, you know, smack them with the hammer. It's pretty good, too. We can be pretty lenient with the hammer ammo, but you just gotta make sure not to overdo it. Then we're gonna head into this level, uh, where we're gonna basically be escorted by, you know, a guilty spark flying droid guy. And he's gonna Adjut tell us. Adjutant resolution? Adjust, adjust, adjutant uh, resolution? Something like I that? I forget what the first word is. We, we, yeah. Um, so we, <laughs> they ask, yeah, basically they're these uh, ancient like forerunner, uh, I guess you'd say like AIs that are tasked with monitoring each Halo or each installation. So that's the one we're going to meet here. Yep. And uh, basically what's happening right now is we found out the Banish are trying to restore this ring that we're on. And this tower is one of the towers that is set up to do that. Um, and the, the Wheatley guy, the floaty boy, he is here to oversee that. And so we're just going to kind of walk in and be like, yeah, we're friends, like we're all good, until we get near the end of the room. And he's like, wait a second, they're going to try to stop us. But until then, we got really nothing going on. So this is a great time for a couple donations. He seems friendly. We have $200 from H8IL3Y, which is probably a word that I don't know how to pronounce. But anyway, they ask, can I bid for Master Chief as the character choice for Mario Party? Um, I don't see that as one of the options. Uh, but I do see that Wario is in the lead with $1,223.90, with Peach in second place with $1,000. So those are your options, as well as a bunch of other ones. OK, so there is one thing here. This is called a tele -E, And uh, you'll, you'll see why in just a second. Yeet. Oh. <laughs> you just keep your uh, momentum to the, oh, to the from teleporter. The, from like the, the ground pound launch? Yep. Oh, that's awesome. How much time does that save? None. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. just really cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you can do like, a couple, couple could, more donations. Could you grapple the... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead with donations. All right. We have $50 from Auto Scrolls. 
Alo hype. Oh. Watching this here with my six month old and they're loving it as much as I am. Donation to Runner's Choice. We also have a $5 donation from Zealot343. Really excited for the Halo Infinite run tonight. Thanks for all the runs and the great cause. We have a $500 donation from Laserbeard343. Wow, that's awesome. Wow. We also have a $117 donation from Laserbeard343. <laughs> wow. What a legend. Phew. Got time for another? Yeah, one more. One more. We have $50 from Bardem. I work in broadcast operations professionally, and I have to say this team puts on one heck of a show every year. From the runners to the hosts, AV team, and producers, it is always top-notch quality. Let's break, let's break the SGDQ donation record this year. All right, so we're going to be fighting a jut into resolution here, and there is a very specific strat we're going to do. We picked up the Mangler uh, because it does just enough damage so that we can hit each of his little arms like three times. And then we're going to try to throw a sticky grenade right in the middle. And if we do it right, uh, we'll kill more than one arm at a time. Okay, I only got one there, but we have another chance. Um, because when you're fighting him, he becomes invincible when he does this laser, and he does it every time his arms break. So we want to ideally get... Oh, nice. We got three there. That was super, super okay, cool. Okay. It's like a 20-second time save every time you blow up more than one arm at a time. So that was really good. Excuse me, sir. Please die. Ah! One HP. <laughs> please, please, die. thank you. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> so we're coming up on my favorite level in the run. This run is, this level is super cool. It's called Pelican Down. Um, it's got three anti aircraft turrets that you gotta blow up, and you can do them in any order that you want. And the fastest way to travel in the overworld is coil launches, right? So we're going to be launching from one to the other and back and forth to try to get all these towers super, super quickly. Um, we recently were running into problems with this because it would soft lock if you move too fast. Because the game basically has a cutscene that plays when you go to blow up the tower. And if you went too fast, you could skip some triggers. And then the cutscene wouldn't play, and you just would be stuck there. You're just like stuck, awkward, locked inside the tower. Um, that would be a really big time loss. I used to kill a lot of runs until we found uh, I routed out this route, which has a vastly uh, less chance of soft lock. There's still a small chance that it can happen. Basically, there's um, some triggers. From my understanding, there's some triggers on the way there, and you're moving so fast when you coil launch that you can actually go through the trigger in between the time it checks for you. And if that happens, then you're just kind of up. So we'll see. I'm going to do a launch here. And the first launch is the only one that has a chance to soft lock. And you'll know it'll soft lock because I'll press the button on the tower, and then nothing will happen. Mm. So we'll see. Yeah, best of luck. Thank you, thank you. Good. Let's get out of here before the fireworks start. OK, I'm going to not die first. <laughs> I was going to say, that sounds, uh, yeah, that sounds uh, scary. Yeah, ideally, you want to do it before it blows up. Right. But you know, not dying is fast, too. OK, that was OK. I didn't quite get the speed I wanted, but that's more than fine. That guarantees we don't soft lock, so that's fog. That's cool. Um, so what we're looking for is we could tell that wasn't a perfect coil launch because we didn't hit what's called terminal velocity. You might know terminal velocity from real life. Um, it's actually nothing like that. We just named it that because it's kind of similar, or at least we thought it was at first. Um, basically, when you start going a certain speed, the game just gives up on trying to slow you down. So you will lose all friction and you'll just float in a straight line until you hit something or stop. Um, and so if you get a good coil launch, you'll hit terminal velocity, and then you'll just fly infinitely until you hit a wall. And so we were looking for that because we're trying to travel a really far distance. So we got one more opportunity to hit it here. Hopefully we'll get it. We need it because this one's really far. Okay, yeah, we hit it. See, I'm just floating in a straight line. <laughs> Forever. Wow. Are you even like, are you even like descending aside from the angle of your launch? Nope, just the angle of the launch. You just will float forever until you hit a wall or, or you can use the thruster to redirect it. And that's why we grabbed the thruster because you can, you know, channel that insane speed into somewhere else. And that was a really slow terminal velocity, actually. The reason, 
it's not actually like terminal velocity in real life, is that in real life, you know, terminal velocity means you can't fall any faster than that. Uh, but once you hit the threshold, you can't actually go faster than the speed, like the lower speed limit for terminal velocity. And that was like about as slow as you could go before wow. you don't hit it anymore. I, no, I expected when you used the thruster as well that it would kind of like set you to a to a set speed as well. Kind of like, like the dash in Celeste or something like that where... Yeah, no, it actually just gives you a little bit of a speed bump, but the change in angle will slow you down a lot. Okay. So if you're not going that fast, you'll actually lose terminal, but we were going just fast enough to be able to change angle gotcha. there. Okay. Yeah, one more launch. We're going to try to get over to the boss fight in the middle now that we've blown up all the towers. There we go. That was wow. a really good one. This is so sick. <laughs> yeah, this level is awesome. Thank goodness for no fall damage too, right? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> This is the scary thing, though. This is like one of the harder boss fights in the run, and we haven't gotten a checkpoint since we did the launch. So if we die, we have to do the launch again. And it's not the most consistent trick, so... Please die, sir. Uh-oh, those are a lot of... Oh yeah, <laughs> okay, I thought... Yeah, I kind of saw you it You really went for that. Yeah, I was like, did the coils blow up? No, no, I blew up. <laughs> How far back is your checkpoint? Um, hopefully I get to show the launch off again. Yeah, I do. Okay. All right. This is bonus content right here. You got some time for donations now that I get back there. All right. We have $100 from Shatter Mage. A haiku. Let's go waifu, go. Fast Halo Infinite hype. Haloruns.com. Haloruns.com? We also Haloruns.com. We also have a $1,250 donation from Enderfan. There once was a lad from the nether. With no seed, he had nothing to tether. He looked for some pearls and avoided some whirls and finished that dragon with a feather. And that donation went towards our bonus game, our next bonus game, I should say, of Minecraft Java Edition, where we have already raised $5,749 towards that incentive. Thank you all so much. That is awesome. Okay, so that's Pelican down. And hey, you got an extra coil launch. That's yeah, pretty cool. Extra coil launch. And I hit it too, so that's cool. <laughs> um, we're going to do... I, I just dumped my hammer there, but we have li very limited ammo, right? So we only have two swings left, but thankfully there's a little thing you can do in the next level where if you restart the level, if you hit restart mission right at the start of this level, you actually get all of the ammo and nades and equipment back that you had when you started the boss fight previously. So I actually get all that back, which is why I just dumped all my resources there. And uh, this level is definitely the most intense and scary level for me running at this marathon because... Uh, it's basically the same thing as the last level, except on a much bigger scale. We gotta go to four towers instead of three AA guns, and we gotta uh, kill all the enemies at them and then press a button. And of course, I'm gonna be coil launching from one tower to the next. But they're like really far away, like three to four times further away from each other than the towers were in the previous mission. Um, so that's gonna require a really big launch. So we're gonna do two launches. And it's really important that we get this correctly. Uh, but first, we got to get to the first tower. And these Banshee spawns are actually 100% consistent. So we're just going to yoink this one. Get me inside, and I should be able to use the pulse to reconstruct a Excuse me, sir. I need that. Thank you. <laughs> and then to fly over to the first tower. Excuse me. Thank you. Um, this mechanic is so annoying in multiplayer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it feels good. It's right? <laughs> Uh, we're going to fly over here, and we're praying that we don't see Banshees here. There's RNG Banshee spawns that happen here, and if they do spawn here, we're going to have to kill them, because when we're setting up the coil launch, they're going to troll us. So they should pop in like now. Okay, cool. We didn't nice. get Banshees. Nice. There we go. That'll make this a lot easier. <laughs> I love the clapping for the good RNG. Like, yes, good RNG. <laughs> yeah. Not trolled by the game. Okay. I mean, that's something to clap for. It, I mean, I wish it happened at home. So we're killing these enemies in this area, and honestly, like, the Banshee's not a bad way of doing it. Excuse me, sir. Can I have that? Thank you. What did you do? What was your purpose? We actually run out of ammo fairly often, so I'm just going to be switching guns, like, all the time. But we would preferably like to have a Mangler, because the Mangler's got a really strong melee, 
And it's one shot kills a lot of the lower tier enemies. The problem is it runs out of ammo really fast because you use it to kill the entire like map, basically. Excuse me, sir. Please die. Need you to get out of this turret. Thank you. And we need to be careful not to blow up the blue fusion coils because those are shot coils and they're very, very special compared to other fusion coils. Because you can throw them and get them to stand up by themselves. And they're the only coils that can do that. And that's really important Great. for this trick. Mm. So we're going to be setting it up here. And this is the hardest trick in the run by far. Um, it's really finicky. And if we get it, I'm going to be super stoked. So Good luck, dude. Wish me luck. I'm just got to go press the button and come back and we'll set it up. So like I said before, if you grapple hook a fusion coil, it becomes hard. And when you're trying to do redirects, it's really useful for the fusion coil to be against a wall because then you can run into it and get it to stand still. And that makes the boost way better. Um, but there's no good spots to redirect over here. So we're going to turn the fusion coil hard and then have it stand up by itself and then run into it itself. Mm. Um, so that's why we need this specific fusion coil because oh. it's really good at standing up by itself. Right. Um, very special. Yeah, very, very special fusion coil. Um, because then we'll be able to walk into it without it moving, like this. And then, oh my god, first try. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that, my friends, is PogChamp. <laughs> so we're flying, like, really fast, as you can see. Oh, much the thruster has so much value here. Yeah, huh? yeah. Do, you, you could not do this without the thruster. You, you would just be straight praying that you go the right direction. Wow. And so... Now that I am here, I'm falling down and I'm spamming crouch because you can like spam crouch and Chief will lower himself in the air and that causes you to fall. Fast. Is that why you were scrolling? Yeah, right I bound a crouch okay. to the scroll wheel to make that easier. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. But we gotta be careful here because the same thing that happened with the boss fight can happen here where I do the launch and then I don't get a checkpoint. Right. So if I die here, I might have to do the launch again if I'm unlucky. And that, that's the hardest trick in the game. So I would like to not do the launch again. <laughs> as cool as it was, there, there will be more. It's not that one, please. I would imagine a lot of this fusion coil movement like supersedes using the pelican to fly around as well. Yes. Yeah. So technically, it's only a, like 30 to 40 seconds faster to do the fusion coil launches um, if you do them like only like somewhat optimally over just flying the pelican for this section. But it is like infinitely cooler, and this is Halo Infinite. So you may as well be doing the coil launches, right? Let's otherwise, a marathon. Yeah, otherwise, yeah. what's the point? All so clear. Nice, work, nice. We got the all clear. There was no elites hiding inside the walls in this time. <laughs> that happened in our practice run. It was a, a good meme. So we got one more big boy launch coming up to get to the next tower. So here's hoping it goes well. I'm not going to be doing the hard coil shenanigans. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Trey. Um, who was like the only other person who ran all missions with me, and he helped me labbed out these coil launches. That's cool. It uh, was really, really cool, because he definitely needed the help. So we're going to grab that last Spartan core, and we're going to use that to upgrade the thruster, ideally while we're in the air for minimal time loss. Oh. Nope, not quite what we wanted. A little too vertical. So I'm I hear, I, hear, I hear you spamming that scroll. Yeah, I'm like, down please faster. fall faster. Thank you. <laughs> we got a checkpoint, though. That's fall. Oh, that is really, that's a really nice checkpoint. Yeah, nice. Nope, not quite. It's the easy tricks that are hard, as always. This one, I don't know. I mean, I don't, maybe, this one looks more difficult. There we go. Wow. And so I upgraded the thruster there, so I get two thruster charges, which is really useful because it's still going up. <laughs> yeah, because, <laughs> because if you if you don't, then you don't it doesn't recharge fast enough, and you'll hit the wall. Gotcha. And there's the outside of this area has these big sticky elastic barriers that you'll get caught in, and then you'll just fall to your death and have to do the launch again. Um, and on top of that, you know, having two dashes is nice, and it's going to help for some out of bounds traversal later. But the same thing applies. We haven't got a checkpoint yet, so this is not the safest but I think it'll be okay. Just gotta kill some of these enemies. The Wraith is the scary one, but recently these guys have been kind of griefing and they just get out of the Wraith, which is pretty good. This is cool. Oh my. I feel like Halo Runners and asking for checkpoints is just a tale as old as time. Yeah, can I? Oh. <gasps> <laughs> they were insulted. I said they griefed. 
That's okay. You, you kind of brought it on yourself. I did. <laughs> I jinxed it. I like fully jinxed it. That's okay. At least you have, this, le- this checkpoint is pretty amazing, though, for this yeah, launch. Yeah, this, I mean, dude, as long as we get more coil launches. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> this is a cool trick, right? People paid, you know, 77000 for this, and you're just giving them what they paid for. Yeah, dude. This would be an excellent time for some donations, by the way. <laughs> Just saying. You got it. Thank you. We have two hundred and fifty dollars from three four three Kubli. Wow. Three four three Dev and longtime GDQ watcher here. I may have abused my position as our internal comms manager to send out a call for studio folks to watch and donate today. Nice. Boy, did they rise to the challenge. Nope, thank you to everyone at three four three for making this beautiful game, and thank you to everyone at GDQ. Yeah, that is awesome. Thank you guys. For providing us this wonderful opportunity to see it broken for a great cause. I'd like to dedicate this donation to my own little Spartan, slated to be born in the next few weeks, and my wife Morris for bringing one more Halo and GDQ fan into the world. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. Also, I didn't grief that time, so we're good. <laughs> All right, so we have one more tower to unlock, and unfortunately, there is no real marathon safe way to launch to this one. Uh, in fact, no one's ever done it. Uh, so. We are just going to fast travel, and then we're going to be using the Pelican to okay. get to the last one. And it's it's really convenient because the last one is going to um, it's going to have a wave system, unlike all of the other towers that we've done so far. Uh, so we're going to have to kill a bunch of enemies, and that means there's going to be phantoms. And we're going to be using the Pelican to kill the phantoms. Can so, you fire the weapon on it? Uh, it's not really so much a weapon. You, you more use it as a hammer. Like a... Okay, I'm just gonna wait and see. I'm confused. You'll see. It, it'll yeah. okay. It'll be impossible to miss because it might destroy your retinas. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I get it now. Yeah. You're gonna ram into them. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I am going to ram into them. Uh, but in the meantime, this is an excellent time for a couple of donations. All right, we have one hundred dollars from a three four three Turner. My goodness. Yeah. Showed up. Sure did. Longtime GDQ fan here, Halo Infinite was the first game I had the opportunity to work on, and seeing it played here is so surreal, genuinely bringing a tear to my eye. Oh. Incredible run and incredible commentary by Waifu and Brian Otto. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. That's awesome. You got time for like one more? We have $117 from Noble. $117 seems like a good amount to honor Spider-Man, or er, I mean Master Chief! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that is awesome. Thank you guys so much. I've literally never heard so many dev donations yeah, in that a single is, run. Really it's got to cool. be like a like a GDQ record. So we're gonna be using the hammer that is the pelican in this section. We gotta clear out these enemies. Those grunts never stood a chance. Really did not. And uh, we got some hunters to kill here, and we're on some cycles. We're waiting on mm. the phantoms to spawn, so we need to stay close to the pelican so that we can use it as a hammer. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes. Did you ever get that glitch when you were playing where the pelican, or sorry, the, the phantoms are like the size of like a, like a grape? No, but that sounds They're like amazing. super tiny. That sounds super weird. amazing. Little, yeah. little cute phantoms. Yeah. That sounds great. There's a bunch of stuff like that in this game, actually. So we're clearing out these enemies. Got one more, and then we got another phase that spawns. It's not really a huge rush because you are waiting on that second spawn set to come in, and it does take its time because it's like, well, there's like hunters and stuff. It's going to take a while, right? Right. But uh, not if you just run into the phantom. That seems to be the only way we are killing phantoms at the moment is you know, either by having them run into me. Did you? I thought you died for a sec. No, thank okay. goodness. I've done that enough already. We yeah. can, <laughs> we can stop doing that. That's true. Uh, yeah, I mean, when you're doing like a tank gun run, you just shoot them with the tank gun. Right, okay. But uh, you can do it if you use your grenades really well and you like pick up the rockets and stuff. But you know, it's a lot more fun to just run into them. I appreciate that your movement in every single one of these towers has been identical. I do, it's optimal. Yeah. We're speed running. Dude. We're, gaming is occurring at this moment. <laughs> So this is the end of the level. Uh, we got all the data from the towers, and now we're heading in to the basement, where um, we're going to do some interior levels. 
And we're supposed to fight all these enemies outside and stuff, but we're just gonna not do that. Excuse me, sir. I'm, I got a speed run to finish. And you just can skip right past them. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so this mission is, is really cool. It's uh, This is the Nexus, and originally this level was done like 90% out of bounds, because you can go out of bounds in the very first room and then just do the whole thing out of bounds, basically. But it turns out not actually faster. You can just, like, running past the enemies turns out to be faster in a lot of situations. I'm, I'm not going to lie, I kind of love when that happens. Yeah, it's kind of cool, right? Yeah. It's kind of cool because you're like, well, of course out of bounds is faster. And everyone does the out of bounds and then you time it and you're like, wait a second. Yep. You could just hold W and that's like way easier and faster. Excuse me, sir. Um, yeah, so that ended up being the case for a lot of this level. But the second half is done completely out of bounds still. Um, a lot. Oh my Those fusion coils don't seem like they care about the difficulty you're on. No. Well, that was not a fusion coil. That was oh. a grunt oh. who just like... Oh, did they do that? They pulled out the grenades? Yeah, they just okay. pulled out the grenades and just were like, you're coming with me. And gotcha. I'm like, I, I don't want to go where you're going. I don't think they have clothes that fit me. Excuse me, sir. Got to be careful with the hammer ammo because we only have oh, one only have swing 10. left. Yeah. yeah. So we're just not going to be using it, but we're just going to hold it out all the time. Right. Uh, one of the things that makes running past the enemies a bit easier is that they, a lot of them have like these scripted sequences. Like they come out and they do like a specific animation. Mm. Um, but you're running so fast with the hammer that you just kind of are already past them. Um, so you can clip out of bounds with the ground pound clip. Basically anywhere that there is like a 40, like the curve at the bottom there, like a 45 degree angle towards the ground. Wow. So you can actually just move geometry um, to where you need to go and then just go right out of bounds. Wow. And now that we have the thruster, we can actually get a little bit more optimal with the out of bounds movement. But we gotta be careful because if we do hit the edge of the FBX boundaries, we're gonna be stuck in place. And sometimes that can be a, a huge time loss. So I gotta be careful not to fall too low into the ground. Is, is this like as scary as it looks? It, it can be very scary, especially like if you miss a grapple, it's like, oh my oh, God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause you gotta stay close to the collision. Otherwise uh, you can get definitely griefed. It's fine, play it a little safe. We got this really long hallway that we're going to be going down. Um, and you can go inside and out of bounds. Like, either way is fine. But if you go inbounds, there's a big section where it takes away your ability to grapple near the end. Oh. Um, and so it's really scary because if you miss it, then you, and you miss it and you die, then you have to do the whole grapple again. And it's like two minutes long. So I'm going to go out of bounds just to be safe. And it looks cooler. Um, but this is actually a really good time for donations. And I'm just going to be doing my best Spider Man impression for like two minutes here. Give me impressions of Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> we have five hundred dollars from maidenless behavior. Halo Infinite, <laughs> Halo Infinite dev here. Great run, incredible oh. commentary. It's as much fun watching the game being broken as it was to make it. Thanks to everyone participating in this awesome event. P.S. FOB's rule. We also have another donation from Pro Ace Joker for one hundred dollars. Loving the Halo Infinite run so far, waifu. Shout out to all my 343 peeps doing so many donations. I just started at the studio coming from the Halo Runs community this last oh, week, no so I gotta double the donation for each slide. For each slide? Oh! Oh yeah. my god. Sorry, I got a little distracted. I was like, slot? Oh, you're gonna go broke, sir. <laughs> for, sure, like, for charity, though. So, I mean, that's... It's for a good cause. Yeah. You got like two more. All right. We have $10 from Rubicant. Men. Keep your eyes down range and your fingers on your triggers, and we'll all go home in one piece. Am I right, Marines? <laughs> oh, excuse me. We have $25 from Hark. Did you think you could just walk into my tower? <laughs> my <laughs> tower? <laughs> Love that. All I right. better see some coil pinches, especially the conservatory one. Yep. Good luck on the run, waifu, and good luck to Doctors Without Borders. Yeah, big, big ups to Hark. He, he found a lot of the coil. Shout out to Hark the Shark, an absolute yeah. legend in Halo speedrunning. He's found so much stuff. Also, big shout out to Dice. He found like most yep. of the stuff on this level. Dice a good dude. Going to be a bunch of awesome Halo runners. Been running this game. Getting, getting any percent down to like 27 minutes. Absolutely insane. Really dope to see. They just did a, a relay race of like the whole series. 
Didn't get to catch it because I was here, but... Those legendary relays are the best. So cool. I tune into every single one. So cool. Um, so now we got to pick up three of these power seeds, these little batteries, so that we can power up this cutscene that lets us go up the elevator. Um, and, you know, we, Cortana, as classic, is going insane, as always. Um, even though it's not actually Cortana, it's the weapon. Important lore distinction. Um, yeah, we're watching memories and stuff. And we could just actually not even wait for the door to open. You can just clip out of bounds and get going and do some cool hammer movement, do a gamer spin. Shout out to Zombie Day. <laughs> do a turtle runner with the gamer spin. And uh, yeah, this is actually just honestly still a great time for donations. All right, we have $20 from Adam the Feverish. Do do, 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 Thank you. That was beautiful. I love that you were able to parse that from the donation <laughs> message too. <laughs> it was really hard. Like it wasn't the vocal part I recognized from the earlier part, but yeah, I I got it somehow. <laughs> Legend. Got time for one more? Oh, yeah. We have $5 from Nerd Piggy. If I punch my door hard enough, can I clip my way to Bloomington, Minnesota? <laughs> Only one way to find out. <laughs> shout, out shout out Nerd Piggy. They're one of, my, uh, one of my stream mods. Love them. Nice. Yeah, so here we're doing another save and quit to skip this cutscene here. And then we're going to go up this really, really long elevator shaft. Um, so honestly, it's another great time for donations. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Another great time for donations, like this one for $250, an anonymous donation. Thank you very much for the donation. We also have $100 from Colin. Loving the runs this year. What a great event. Didn't know how much I missed the crowd. Hype! Hype. Hype. Thanks, crowd. <laughs> we have an anonymous $50 donation. Shout out to Doctors Without Borders. All my homies love Doctors Without Borders. True. So do I. We have $100 from Schmarty. Awesome seeing all the love for these bonus games. More GDQ. Do you have any idea of what you're interfering with? Probably time for one more? Yeah, you got time for like two more. Oh, wow. Two more. We have a $500 donation from Axiom. My first time in a place where I can give as much as my heart feels for this event. Thank you to all the staff, runners, and everyone watching. We have $100 from Evelyn Moss. Always happy to donate for a good cause and good prizes. Good luck to all the runners. Awesome. Yeah, so now we have showed up to the Command Spire, which is like the big boy spire. It's the, the one we've been looking for the whole time. Um, and the Harbinger is here, and that is, I think, a Forerunner who, uh, uh, no? Some, I don't know, some yeah, more thing. This is where, I beat the game a long time ago. This is where my lore gets a little little fuzzy. They're like some other. Get me to that terminal. Basically, they're the big yeah, bad. Yeah, they're, they're, like, they're like the, the new big bad. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're the new big bad. And <laughs> um, they got freed when uh, we got out of Outpost yeah. Harmonious. And so they're siding with the Banished and um, we're trying to catch them and stop them from rebuilding the ring so that we can go home. And uh, Cort not Cortana um, was like hacking something and it seemed like she was going to go evil mode. So Chief went to go delete her and now she's very upset. She's very, very upset and passive aggressive towards Chief. <laughs> That's, that's actually a lot of the big story beats in this game is Chief's kind of like the Chief's relationship with Weapon, this new AI in his head, and how they learn to interact with each other and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, gameplay-wise here, we're in basically what's the same area where we fought that other boss before, um, but later in the game, and it's going to have another tele coming up, but this one's not going to be super useful because we're going to turn around and immediately go out of bounds. Um, this level is very, very long, normally, but we're going to skip right towards the end of it. Um, this is where, actually where Ground Pound Clips got found, because wow. people were doing them on accident on random enemies. Um, 
but we figured out how to do it on purpose. It's way more consistent this way, and you can do it in places like that. And now we're going to climb all the way up wow. to the top of the level. Thankfully, the FBX boxes are really generous here, so we aren't going to have that big a deal. Um, and see that little octagon shape up there, like the stop shine shape? We are going to be going towards that because that's where one of the skulls is hidden. Uh, we're not going to pick it up because oh. it's mythic. Oh, and you definitely don't want mythic. No, mythic makes all of the enemies harder. Yeah. <laughs> so not, not the most useful skull, but it is a really mighty convenient place to clip back in bounds. But yeah, not, not going to pick that up. That would, <laughs> would you not want that. That would make the run a lot harder. For, for folks that don't know, there are Easter eggs basically in every Halo game dating back to two that you can find these. You, if you get to these hidden areas, you can pick up skulls that modify the game in different ways, like make enemies' heads like explode with like birthday party uh, confetti and stuff, or make them give them double HP or something like that. So. Yeah. And that's one of the ones that makes it harder. I wish it was like Grunt Birthday or something, because yeah. it would be awesome That'd be to awesome. pick it up. Wow. OK, that was cool. <laughs> And so now we got our trusty Mangler out. We're here to terrorize multiplayer. I mean, uh, kill this guy, kill it the boss. Nerfed. It did get nerfed. Well, yeah, there you go. They didn't nerf it in this patch, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be doing the same strategy as before, doing a certain amount of hits on each arm, and then trying to break them all off at one time, like we did on the first time we fought this boss. But this time he has adds or additional enemies every time you break your arm, so you gotta be really careful. It's actually a lot easier to die on this fight. This fight was really hard. Yeah, this, this fight is a lot harder. Road. Did I get two? How many did I get? Oh, I got all four. Wow, wow. okay. All right, was, let's go. That was awesome. Also, this crowd has been like, yeah, thank so you guys. easy to please tonight. Y'all are awesome. Yeah, thank you. Bring a great you. energy. Excuse me, sir. Can you, the, staring is rude. Thank you. He has friends. We have friends. Please die. Sir? Oh. Sir? Got it. There you go. There you I go. got you. I got you. Okay, don't, don't kill me, please. <laughs> I really thought you were about to run into that. I actually don't know if that could kill you, but I was like, last second, I'm like, wait a second. You were like, maybe uh, my maybe. GDQ run is not the place to find it. Yeah, yeah. This is not the best place to test stuff. And uh, now we're going to head into the upstairs here where we're going to fight a couple of phantoms. So flashbang warning. Um, but... It has the only recharge station for power weapons in the whole game. Mm -hmm. So there's these recharge stations where you can like refill your ammo for projectile weapons or for plasma weapons. And uh, they do exist for heavy weapons like rocket launchers and grab hammers and stuff, but this is the only one in the whole campaign. Um, so we could actually have, the reason why we could have used so much of our hammer all the way down to 10% is because we're going to get it back to max here. Um, and that's really important because some of the boss fights later on, we're going to be using the hammer quite a bit. Yeah, I remember this fight. Excuse me, sir. Can I have that? Thank you. Very generous jackal. Come here. <laughs> you think you're so big. I mean, Chief is pretty tall. He's pretty big. He's, he's not like... quite as big as these guys, but he's... He's pretty he's, tall. He's... Quite a large fellow. Yeah. I think he might give like Shaquille O'Neal a run for his money. He's, I he's, forget how tall he actually is, but he might be taller than Shaq. But John Halo is quite tall. So yeah, get get that hammer recharged and use the rockets here. Three phantoms are gonna show up, and that one, like, it shows up, it's like, hey, what you doing? And you shoot twice the rockets, like, never mind. <laughs> I'm going home. And uh, same with this one, really. How many rockets to to kill? To kill, it's like four, but you shoot them twice and they just kind of are like, never mind. Gotcha. This is, you know, this is not worth it. I don't get paid enough for this. Oh, so that counts as a... Yep, it counts as a kill and they just run away. <laughs> I wonder if that's the thing on easy difficulty? I don't, I don't know. I don't it, know if they... Do, I don't remember them doing that on... on ma part. Maybe it is an only easy yeah. difficulty thing. Interesting. All right. Okay, now we're on um, the last interior-only mission. Uh, suppository, and we are going to. What? I mean, what? Did you hear something? I didn't hear anything. Uh, <laughs> okay. And uh, <laughs> so we're going to be heading towards the last. This is, this is the last mission where we're inside, basically. And then after this, we have the road, which is a short exterior mission, and then House of Reckoning, which is the big bad boss fight with this uh, guy, Esherum, the the big brute that we've been dealing with. Leader um, of the Banished. Yeah, the Leader of the Banished. And that'll be a nice 
A nice, very broken exchange that we have with him. I'm excited. But this level is uh, actually one of the most solidly constructed in the whole game. It, it is really hard to break. Uh, we've tried for a long time, and we just cannot skip um, the big combat section in this area because it, once you get to the end of the level, it just it, it, you press the button and nothing happens. You're just like, but I got to the end, and they're like, no, you gotta you gotta go go play the game. You're like, but I want to cheat. I'm a speedrunner. <laughs> Please don't die. Oh! We're fine. Okay. This is fine. Wow. So we gotta be a little bit careful here. The FBX boundaries are really tight, and uh, there's no checkpoints or save progress yet, so I'll have to do the whole level again if I get caught in it here. Here we go. Okay. So do you just, like, freeze in place if that happens? Yeah, you freeze in place, and the game's like, you're not supposed to be here. Gotcha. Um, yeah, don't want to show it off. Uh, otherwise. I <laughs> But I, I assure you, it's not good. It's kind of funny, though, because your player model locks in place, but you have free control of the camera. Uh, yeah. So you can like turn around and see that like the back of Chief's head. Excuse me, sir. Could you please go through the door frame? Thank you. What a kind door. Just needed a little bit of manners, I guess. Uh, this would actually be a great time for a couple donations. All right. We have $100 from 343 Sahat. Another Halo Infinite dev here. I worked in test automation and tooling, so it's really neat to see all the cool behind-the-scenes stuff y'all have found. For sure. Literally, behind the scenes without a bounce. Thanks <laughs> for playing our game, Waifu Runs, and keep donating, everyone. You can do a couple more. We have $25 from McBoat. Halo Hype! <laughs> Nice. That was good. That was impressive. Yeah, you held that. Got time for one more? Yeah, go for it. All right, we have $101.01 from Solus Automaton. Beep, boop, beep, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, beep, boop, boop. That was a good song. I loved it. Masterpiece. It's a little weird with, like, the, the echoes of, of Cortana. <laughs> <with Rico's laughs> That's great. Yeah, so this is the reason why we can't skip this level. This is an elevator that we need to go up. Um, we've established before that we don't really need the elevators. Like we can, we can kind of grapple hook up there. But if you do, then you get to the end of the level and it doesn't work. So uh, okay. you got to go get two power seeds from other sides of the room and uh, fight a couple of brutes to get them. So we're just gonna be going over here and saying what's up. Give him a nice. Nice punch. Where are you going, dude? Hello? You did just hit him with the gravity hammer away from you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he was even looking at me, though. He was afraid. Didn't want to make eye contact. It gets awkward. Oh, <laughs> Craig moment. Yeah, he didn't want to either. He's closing his eyes. I'm not that out of you guys. Come on. I love that ground pounds. It's, dude, that was like on, so on those higher difficulty playthroughs. That like that was like my. It comes in clutch, man. My saving grace. Yeah. <laughs> this is so cool. I love this trick. Yeah, it's super fun, and it saves time. It's even better. It looks really easy too. It is. It is really easy. That's one of the cool things about this speedrun is that some of the tech is like super hard, right? Like the the coil launches across the map, very very difficult. But just doing some of the stuff is like really approachable and fun. Like, this, just the slides, like, you just pull out the hammer and do some slides off some grapples and just have a great time, you know? Same with uh, some of, like, the ground pound clips and tank gun and all that stuff. It's, like, pretty approachable. Well, one of the things I, I appreciate about this run in particular is, like, y'all have, like, I don't know, five pieces of speed tech that you just kind of, like, mix and match throughout the entire run. Yeah, it's <laughs> honestly, like, there's not, like, that many different things that you do. They're just, like, pretty universally applicable. Really cool, yeah. And that's kind of the joy of an open-world speedrun, you know? They build these, like, nice, robust sandbox mechanics. And you just get to kind of play around with them. Let me get to do this again. Yep. Ye do you Do you purposely aim for that little ledge? Yeah, I was trying to grab it, but... Oh, I think it's cool. It's cool that you bounced off it. Yeah, that's worth. Yeah. It is. It is pretty cool. Ah, uh, yes, the weapon ASMR. This is what people donated for. It's a little confusing too because you got the weapon and Cortana talking. Okay, 
here we go. So we're heading towards the end of the level now. We did get everything we needed to progress. We just got to head to the end here. This is supposed to lock you in here. You're going to fight some enemies, but... I can only, I can only imagine what you can You can only do. imagine... Yeah. What could he possibly do? Like, he's stuck, right? No, no. okay. We're, we're here. And then we're going to be getting right to the end of the level here. Right at the end. And we're going to show a piece of tech that is completely new to the run so far. We haven't seen it yet in this next level. Um, it's called a chopper launch. You might have seen it. Shout out to Mint Blitz, who uh, has made a lot of really cool trick jump videos with stuff like this. Um, basically, there is a nade called a shock nade, and it does EMP damage, right? It, it'll stun vehicles and make them not work. Um, but with, if you're boosting with the chopper and you run into an EMP grenade, the chopper just continues to go in that direction, like basically forever. It just applies terminal velocity, basically, and it'll just keep accelerating into the sky. Okay. And this level, basically, the goal is get to the other side of the road. And that seems like a pretty good way to get to the other side of the road to me. So that's what All we're right. going to do. I'm excited. What's wrong? So we picked up these shock nades like way earlier in the run, and this is exactly what they're going to be using. I love for. that you got a little ramp for you, too. Yep. Nice little boost off point. Make sure we set up properly so I don't agree. These things are really awkward to drive. Yeah, though. chopper is not. Not the best thing. Oh, like, yeah, so it's going to look like that, except for I'm going to do it on purpose. Oh, 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 wait. Oh, 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 not, not great. It's okay. <laughs> it really tried. It, re it's, it really did. It's okay. We have another shock, man. We can try again. Uh, the chopper, please. You know, these things are made for brutes to drive, not me. They're made to drive in straight lines in the vehicles and blow them up. That's really about it. Yes. Yeah. Ah. It is unwieldy as it looks. The <laughs> epic music is here to <laughs> back me like up. You guys are just waddling around with this thing. Here we go. Here we go. Oh! Ah. I'm a little low, but hopefully we can be hop off this. Wow! Yeah. I'm guessing that's it. That was awesome. Actually, I am going to do another trick as a backup because I didn't make it all the way there. You can, you can get it all the way there, but... We didn't that time, so I'm going to show off this backup as well. This is what we used to do. Nice. Little jump over. And I wanted the ghost, so I figured I may as well do it. Don't kill me! Oh, <laughs> We're, this is fine. This is fine. <laughs> I don't know what scared me more, you yelling or that. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry. I panicked. I literally jumped. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. This is fine. This is fine. <laughs> so there is actually an instance of lunge warping that we could have done there. Basically, the, the trick is you take a vehicle and you punch an enemy while, while you're lunging to punch them, you get into the vehicle. And what that does is it actually tricks the game into like displacing your player character somewhere relative to the angle and pitch that you're looking when you get in the vehicle. And so it actually lines up perfectly that at the beginning of the road, the first ghost, you could set it up and then lunge warp all the way here into the cutscene and just teleport there instantly. But it's like insanely precise. And there's okay. a million enemies around that throwing grenades at you. Yeah. So, and the chopper launch is cooler. So it is pretty you know, cool. do the chopper launch. And then we're in House of Reckoning. And House of Reckoning is supposed to be a big gauntlet where you gotta fight a whole bunch of enemies. Literally so many wave fights. Waves and waves and waves of enemies. Um, fortunately, we don't have to fight any of them, but this does have its own challenges. We don't just get to run to the end. Um, once we're out of bounds here, they're super precise. There's a bunch of triggers that you have to hit in very specific orders. Mm. And if you don't, then you'll soft lock. So I gotta be careful to you know, do things at the right time and be in the right place. Otherwise, I will be boned, and I'll get to the end, and I'll be soft-locked. So we're waiting for that alarm there to move on forward. We skipped the first room full of waves of enemies um, there. Basically, you go to the door at the end, and the game's like, oh, okay. So you got past it, but you have to wait for the initial dialogue to end first. So you see the objectives up in the top left there. Um, survive basic training. We have it, but we haven't completed it, and we need to get the completion there. There we go. Um, once we get that and we get complete advanced training to show up, then we know that we should be good and we won't soft lock, hopefully. Um, this is really important because this level is a perfect example of why 
this category is rules are phrased the way they are, it's just start every mission. Because we don't want to specify how you beat it. Because the way you beat this mission is nowhere near the way you're supposed to beat it. Um, and you'll see that in just a second. And looking up at that top left, um, the objectives will be super important for that. So, like, you just need to... I'm just I'm a little confused. Like, you just need to, like, progress the... The narrative, basically? Yep. That's like, okay, you, okay. It's got to start the levels. You can end them however you want. Okay. And uh, th it'll make a lot more sense when you see how I end this level. Okay. That, it, that, it, that it needs to be specified that okay. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's this huge buildup to this elite that's been traveling around, following you the whole time. The and his hunter. gimmick is he's invisible once again. <laughs> um, and so he's going to be invisible. But that's okay, because I don't really need to know where he is to hit him with a hammer. <laughs> that fight's actually super scary, casually. Too. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. But he has a if really cool... If you could cool stop energy. almost restarting the mission, too, I would... Yeah, my it's heart would kind of terrifying. <laughs> the, the, the quit out button and the restart mission button are right next to each other. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. So uh, we quit out here to skip a bunch of dialogue that we have to wait for to, for this door to open. Um, and we're going to head in to fight Eshram, which is going to be this big, epic boss fight with multiple phases. And we're waiting for all this cool stuff because we got to save Echo 216. The pilot got captured. He's here being tortured. we got to save him. He's my buddy. I'll get you out of there, buddy. Never mind. I don't want to fight this guy. Goodbye. <laughs> He's scary. That's so we're just going to run away. Hard. This fight's, yeah, this fight's hard. I'm going to, I'm going to get out of here. So the objective in the top left, which you'll see in a second, is defeat Eshram. It doesn't say how you need to do that, though. Wasn't specific enough. So I run far enough away that he despawns, and that counts as <laughs> defeating Eshram. <laughs> so now that Eshram's defeated, I can go and save Echo 216, right? Well, actually, I'm so far away that when I load back in, the game's like, well, he's not in the room anymore, so you must have saved him. And then it says, you're on Silent Auditorium, which is the next mission. So if you restart the mission, then it teleports you to the next mission. <laughs> this is so dumb. I don't... It, it's kind of just hilarious how that works. You're just so far away, the game's I, like, you know what, just go to the next mission. I remember mission. when this game came out, too, Hark, who donated earlier, was just, like, throwing himself at a way to try and, like, splatter Eshirim or something. Yeah, like, you can put a bunch of I, fusion coils where he spawns. I love that this is what became of it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can still do that strat. You can put a bunch of fusion coils where Eshram spawns so that when he spawns in, they all, like, push him into the ceiling and he dies. But it's really inconsistent, and uh, that is just a lot safer. Wow. So when, he, oh, how, how recent is that find? Uh, that was actually found super early, like... Really? Wow. First okay. month, for sure. Wow. So here we're going to be doing a lot of coil pinches. Um, this one is really finicky and precise, so hopefully oh. I'll be able to get it. Once again, we made the coil hard so it can push us through the wall, but the lineup here is really precise, so... Is this like... There we go. Oh my. Nice. Okay, second try. Second try, not bad. I watched you struggle with that and practice a ton, so yeah, yeah very that, nice. That game. one can be really finicky. There's two more on this level, and the second one is like really free, but the first one and the third one can be kind of difficult. So that was really good. Um, yeah, we're on the final level now. We're just heading to the final boss, the Harbinger. Um, and we're going to be just skipping basically everything. The, that last room there, the reason we went back in bounds and did a coil pinch through the wall is that there's usually two hunters in that room, two red hunters that are really hard to fight. But, um, you know, skipping them is optimal. The problem is the FBX boundary around the room is so tight that you just can't pass around them. You have to go through the inbounds area. And that was a huge problem until we figured out coil pinches. Gotcha. Now, though, we can just pinch right through the wall and we're in there like swimwear. So the next coil pinch coming up right here. Then afterwards would be a great time for a couple donations. I'll let you know just here in a second. Is this the easy one? This is the easy one, yeah. Okay. Love that grapple. Do it right here, set it up. And through the wall. Nice. Now, this would be a great time for a couple of donations. We're getting close. 
All right, we have one hundred and seventeen dollars an anonymous donation. Get me pictures of Halo Man. <laughs> we have twenty-five dollars from Max Sendo. So glad to see Halo Infinite at GDQ. One of my favorite Halo games. Hype. 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 Excuse me, sir. I need that. Thank you. So we're gonna clip out of bounds here one more time. There is um, a a orb boy. And he, and he demands we accept his apology immediately. But I have no time for this argument. Love I'm, you've killed him twice, too. Yeah, I'm out of here, dude. I got to go. So that skips a big, long talk with him. Then we're going to clip back inbounds here. And we're taking the coil with us. And this is super important because we're going to do one more coil launch and then another coil, coil pinch to get through the final door. Um, there's this big, long elevator here that you activate. And there's like a cut scene. And it takes a really long time to get to the top. but. If there's anything that Master Chief is good at in this game, it's going vertically. So we're going to just yeet. Oh, wow. That one, that one's super satisfying, too. Yeah, that one looks really cool. And so here's the last trick of the run, this coil pinch. This one's a little bit finicky, um, but it does save a lot of time in real time. There's another strat you can do where you save and quit, but the load screens are really long in this game, yo, so I want to do it this way. Nice. Go. Very good. So now we're at the final boss. We're going to be fighting the Harbinger. Oh, yeah, that's how you say it, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and basically, her fight boils down. Uh, you get an uh, opportunity to attack her after you fight every set wave of enemies. So there's going to be a wave of enemies, and then you could fight her, and then another wave of enemies, and then you could fight her back and forth until she is dead. There's going to be three waves, and the enemies come out depending on like where you are standing. Um, in No Tank Gun, you don't really have any really, really good way to kill them fast, so you're kind of just winging it. But in Tank Gun, like any percent and stuff, this is like super boiled down to a science. Like, Right where everyone's gonna peek out. Right, like I've watched that do this. And just yeah. totally annihilate them. But oh, there we go. That was a pretty good first wave. We need to take out our shields and then do a little bit of damage, and then get ready for wave two. Uh, I would just like to give a huge shout out to everyone in the Halo Runs community. You guys are a super dope for bunch sure. of rad people that I've met uh, from running this game and Halo Three, and. Um, it's just been super cool overcoming like all the challenges this game has thrown at us and getting to see it at an event like this. Not something I thought we would get going out of it. And it's just really cool to see people like just motivated to play these games and throw all these community events and all this stuff like the Relay. Um, and it's just been really cool. So I, I appreciate it, you guys. Yeah, let's do a clap for Halo Runs. Hell yeah. HaloRuns.com. She has a really good laugh, by the way. If, if You might hear it at the end of this phase transition, hopefully. <laughs> wow. It's quite, it's quite the laugh. I quite enjoy it. Is there anyone uh, you want to shout out, Bri? We're coming oh, up here on the end. I mean, I just really appreciate you having me here. Of course. So, yeah, I don't know. Anytime, anytime I'm invited to be on a couch, it's definitely a, it's definitely a privilege. Yeah, I love doing this. So, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been a Halo fan my entire life. You know, I think this is the, the second Halo run I've couched for now. So, I don't know. It's just really nice, dude. I appreciate you. Yeah, so, of course, man. Um, big shout outs to uh, all of the developer love. Yeah, we that got was this run. Awesome. That was, that, I mean, that was, that's just incredible. Um, I've never, I mean, there, there, yeah, I, I've never like seen that before. So that was really, really cool. And um, yeah, I don't know. Thank, thanks for having me, dude. Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely shout out to the developers. Huge, huge support on the run. It's really, really cool to see. Uh, we're gonna be coming up on time here in just a second after I uh, fight the Harbingers. Last little phase here. I don't have any ammo. <laughs> I was going to say, you're not going to have ammo for this. Yeah, uh, excuse me. Let me go grab that. I think she's... I was going to say, that kind of... Oh, there we go. Time. Oh, there we go. Okay. Time. <laughs> <laughs> 
126.12. Okay, okay. For sure. We had some we had some issues, some memes, but it was pretty good overall. It had, it had the drama. Yeah. It had all the drama. It had the, yeah. You hit the hard stuff, the game crashed. Yeah. You died. Yeah. I'm just glad I hit the big tricks. That was the thing yeah. I really no, wanted. That was, that was a blast, dude. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. a lot of fun. GG. Yeah. I actually got the world record in the practice room yesterday. <laughs> oh! Yeah, so that was cool. And I was hoping we'd be able to get something close here, but it was pretty solid. Just going to casually drop it. Yeah, I just figured I'd put it out there. I was hoping I'd maybe keep her low wraps. Maybe we do it again, but uh, it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Fair enough. Fair um, enough. But yeah, I just want to say thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's super awesome to see GDQ in person again. I, last time I was here, like 2019, late, late 20, or early 2020. And it, 2020. It was such a blast. I always look forward to it a whole ton and just getting to be a part of the event. It is just, it's just, it's a dream come true. So I, I really appreciate you guys. And um, if you guys enjoyed, I stream full time. I also make YouTube videos. You may have seen some of my videos in this game. Waifu runs on YouTube and Waifu on Twitch. Um, I run this game. I'm going to be running Devil May Cry tomorrow. And then I'm going to be helping with the Left 4 Dead 2 run on uh, Friday night. So make sure to stop by, say what's up, and uh, keep, keep supporting this awesome event. Thank you guys. And GG on that world record, Waifu, and even over in the practice room. Goodness. We have a $10 donation from Britwick. Halo runs are always a favorite during GDQ, and this one hasn't disappointed. So much fun. Thanks for the awesome vibes and amazing skill. And with that, we're going to take a quick break, so stick around. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2022, powered by Twitch. We have a few more donations that came in during our Halo Infinite run, like this anonymous donation for $117. Seeing people play games that I've worked on is awesome, and one of the things I really love about this job. Seeing a game that I've worked on get speedrun and broken in ways I never thought possible is mind-blowing. This is amazing. Thank you. And of course, thank you to all of the 343 devs who have donated during our Halo Infinite run. And now for a quick wor word from our sponsors.
All right, we have $25 from the one and only J. Jonah Jameson. Get me pictures of Master Chief now! What's that? Why not Spider-Man? I've already got pictures of Spider-Man! I want pictures of that grappling Master Chief on my desk by the end of the day or you're fired! <laughs> oh, thank you all so much. We have $25 from Maximum. Halo Boy here. Definitely going to try pushing the boss into the ceiling my next playthrough. Thanks for the amazing commentary on a favorite game. We have $100 from First C 624 tv So glad to be able to donate to SGDQ and Doctors Without Borders as I look forward to this every year. Took the week off work to enjoy awesome speedruns. Thank you for getting us through with awesome speedruns. And with that, that is actually going to do it for me here at the hosting desk for this event. This has been so much fun. Thank you all so much for your generous donations. I am Musical Daredevil. I hope you've had an awesome day so far. And in fact, we are going to now head over to our interview area for a recap of today. Take it away with the Red Bull Daily Recap interview team. Hello, SGDQ 2022, and welcome to Tuesday night's Red Bull Daily Recap. I have with me today the ever-wonderful Kizaron and Jay Hobbs, and we are excited to break down some of the amazing things that we saw today. And I feel like, let's tell you no further, let's get right into it. So, Keys, you want to take it away? Absolutely. So, if you did not see this late-night gem, you're going to have to check it out when the VOD's up. So, Sabera Messia did Greek Memories of Azure, and there's actually one segment here where you can, you can kind of see that the character has kind of a float mechanic here, and she just misses the jump, but she's a gamer. Oh my she finds gamer. a way to float, <laughs> saves the day. So that, that's actually a pretty good skip too. Like it skips a decent portion of what's going on, if I recall correctly, but just the save alone, like uh -huh. that's, that's huge. Yeah, absolutely. Saves like that in indie 2D platformers are always like a mixed bag too. It's always really difficult. Well, I want to talk about a different game because we had a bunch of really awesome stuff here in late night, or not quite late night, but the prime time tonight. Uh, we had Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast. Nice. Oh, you, you did, did it. it. Let's okay. Go. Yeah. Than keys. Uh, <laughs> we had a really cool trick here from Covert Muffin, who always puts on a fantastic show, uh, coming in and just doing amazing. So a couple of resets here for this trick at the beginning and then hops up on the drone and just starts going up and up and up and up and up and That's just absurd. keeps going. I don't know how in the world he pulls this kind of thing off. And of course, just Cover Muff is always bringing the good vibes, you know, yeah. always always just a fantastic time. Aww. Nice little hug on nice stage and picture. everything. Absolutely love it. So uh, we love you, Cover Muffin. Thanks for, for uh, you know, showing off a fantastic run. Absolutely. Something that I absolutely love today was, I mean, you know I'm a classic Mega Man fan. That's, or, my, or. that's my OG roots. Mega Man 2 from the Wily Wars remakes on Sega Genesis with our boy Bobby, the Black Tastic, showing off an amazing quick kill here on the Wily machine. Basically, you use the Metal Blade to get down the first phase to the bottom of its health bar, and then you save one crash bomb throughout the Wily stages so that you can use it to annihilate the second phase, frame one, uh, and the first phase at the same time. Wow. Just skip like <laughs> wow. an entire chunk of the boss fight, and it's so cool that this kind of skip that's possible in the NES is possible here too. It, that is incredible. I, I, I was talking with Bobby, I got to do the interview for this and he's just such a, a charismatic personality. Yeah. We were just surprised that we hadn't actually like done an interview together. <laughs> we got a nice little wave to the crowd too from Bobby. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. It was a delight. And uh, I think, you know, it's been a little while. I think we should hear from uh, our good friend. Uh... Hey, buddy. Sent, you uh, want to talk about prizes or you busy? It's... Still playing it. Still playing it. It's good? It's good. Okay. Great. Yeah. Uh, All right, I got you can win that, I think. <laughs> oh, there he I is. I guess so. Um, is that, would you consider that the daily prize? Yeah, you know, we could consider this the daily prize, Hobbs. A $100 minimum donation from now until the end of Mario Party. You could take home your very own lovely Steam Deck uh, courtesy of Valve. And, uh, well, uh, there goes my IL attempt right there. Oh. Yeah, what are you playing? Yeah, yeah, what's going on? I'm playing Neon White. Oh, ooh. ooh. Really, really cool new game published by Annapurna. You got yeah. to check it this out. This is a speedrun game, L I'm listen, telling you. Yeah, sponsorship aside, I literally lost a race to Amerlin in the practice yeah, you did. of <laughs> Neon White. I'm getting you back later this week, Amy. Ooh. 
I'm calling you out on camera. Wow. I'm getting, I'm getting the, I'm rebopping Amy later. When's the uh, SGDQ salty suite for Neon West? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to happen. Also, behind me, uh, Chainmail Inlay, sent to us by uh, the Chain Nerd, $50 minimum donation from now until the end of Mario Party. I'm just telling you, though, $100, get in for both. You don't want to miss them. That chainmail is gorgeous. It really is. It's really beautiful. If you're a Mega Man fan, get those donations in. It's so cool. Can well, why don't we uh, why don't we take a look at some more clips? Keys. What did you look forward to uh, towards the uh, afternoon? Well, I mean, Yakuza, fantastic game. Speed run, fantastic speed run. This is the end. After four hours of working very hard to get to this point, we have a businessman in orange. <laughs> that yeah, this that, is very Yakuza. I think. Yeah, this is this is this is the clip. I, I I think it's been pretty obvious that I like when silly stuff like this happens. I mean GTA <laughs> like that, and then now we have Yakuza. But uh, Yakuza as a run is hilarious to me mm. because they actually do a mini game. They basically play stocks for multi and by stocks I mean like money stocks You're for right. multiple minutes just to Good. get a character and go fast. <laughs> I, I that's silly. I also really loved the karaoke moment at the end of Yakuza where yes. the entire crowd's holding up their, their phones and stuff. <laughs> Dude, that was a lovely moment. We love you, audience. That was yes. such a fun moment that, like, never would have happened without you. So absolutely love it. But uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and take another one yeah, here. Please. Yeah, I really loved the Halo Infinite run we just got. Super cool. Yeah. There were just mind-boggling skips and clips and tricks all over that run. I mean, I, I don't even know exactly what is being skipped here or what's going on, but the grappling hook just enables them to clip right through the floor. In, incredible and just moving around in the, in the out-of-bounds area. Yeah, yeah just swinging around from the grappling hook still and being able to just know exactly which textures that you can shoot through, where to, where to pinpoint those positions and everything. And all the, all the time, you know, still carrying the hammer because you got it. Right. You gotta of course, it. the gravity hammer is important. Yeah, gotta have This it. whole run, I mean, Waifu absolutely shredded it up, but like at, at any moment you can find a clippable moment. It was mm -hmm. like so easy to find a great moment in this run because there are constant clips and tricks like you said. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, I just love how Halo always has like either the hammer or the sword. Like it's, yeah. all, re it's all reliable for any it's, speed run. It's, it's a together. shooting game, but the best weapons are the, the two melee, melee weapons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I, I want, I, I mean, I already talked about Mega Man, but I'm going to do it again. You're uh, allowed. It's fine. Okay, Fiesel. Okay, thank you. <laughs> if Fiesel's not here, I have to represent the NES community. Uh, Papat Dot, my boy, was up here showing up, Mega Man 5, and uh, this is a really cool trick that was discovered in the last few years that allows you to skip all of the refights except for Napalm Man. He gets it first Whoa. try, which is, I believe it is two frames, uh, and then starts setting up for a... Re uh, a fight on the Wily capsule here that Papad is one of the only few runners in the world who even goes for this triple. Oh. Uh, it is an amazing run. You really got to go check it out and uh, check out Papad. And, you know, everybody, we thought it would be interesting tonight to kind of take a look. You know, if you had any questions for us about the event or about runs that we were excited about. So why don't we take a look? Uh, we have a question here from at the Wacket that says, how does the cast deal with the scent nanigans? We don't. We don't. I think. Well, Scent, how do we deal yeah, with Scent? Yeah, what do we... Contractual obligations. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Legally yeah. obligated. I think, yeah. Yeah, we get emails every that's quarter right. that are just yeah. basically like, hey, Scent's going to be doing this. Just yeah, I keep, I keep messaging HR about it, but they're, they've ignored my request at this point. They say that he's got uh, just too much, you know, legacy uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. ranking. He has immunity, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. Uh, we have another great question here from at the Lama Not. It's an interesting. The Lamina, I like it. Oh, it's like it's like astronaut. And, yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, they say, "What's the first trick you ever saw where your jaw just dropped, or a trick you did yourself that you still can't believe you nailed?" This is oh, a great ooh, question. Ooh, yeah, I, I, yes, I want to answer this. Go, go, I want to answer this first. So, I learned how to do Kingdom Hearts two randomizers from my good pal Hobbs here, and core skip. Right, that's what. Yeah. It's called. Yeah. So I learned how to do core skip, and the first time that I did it, I stood up from my chair <laughs> and I popped off. I was like, I was like, Hobbs, so I did it! I did it! Like, I was so excited. It, it's, it's probably amazing. the most excited I've ever been for performing a trick. Yeah. Ever. How about you, Adef? Uh, for me, the most amazing trick I've ever seen, I think, is Yoshi's Island 100% five four skip. Um, five four is this auto scroller that is super long, where you follow on this like moving platform guy. I've never played this game because it seems too hard for me. The speed run, the casual is amazing. Uh, but in the 100% skip specifically, you also have to juggle shy guys and get red coins and like stars as you're skipping. And it is like nuts. If you've not seen a 100% run of Yoshi's Island, I can't recommend it enough. Oh, awesome. Pop, cool. What about you? For me, I, it's still back to Kingdom Hearts. I, I got to go back to it. I didn't know Keys was going to be busting out with Kingdom Hearts. That's, that's <laughs> super surprising. But Surprise. me, all the way back in like 2014, the first time I was seeing a Kingdom Hearts 1 speed run, uh, there is a boss, a notorious boss in that game called Dragon Maleficent that spits fire all over the floor. It's incredibly easy to die. A lot of people, when they're casually beating that, that boss, 
they just hide and let their party members do all the damage and the boss takes like two hours and <laughs> it's forever. Uh, and they destroy it in like 40 seconds by using the stop magic on it over and over and over again. You have just enough MP by just having enough hits in time. It was so cool and it is the trick that I still say got me into speedrunning, and here I am. That's such a lovely story. I love when we you find out about other runners, why they got into speedrunning or what it was that gave them the love of the craft. You know, I, I kind of want other people at home or even here to just, you know, message us. Yeah, tweet it. What, what tweet got you into it? If like, you have like, a clip of a run or a segment, maybe from our event or from something you saw, you know, on your own time that you think is amazing from speedrunning, shoot it to us. Yeah, tweet at, at Games Done Quick on Twitter. Absolutely. Like that, that would be super cool. Hashtag SGDK 2022. Yeah. Maybe even toss in a Red Bull daily recap. There, there you go. <laughs> Excellent. That brand integration, we love to see it. Love it. Uh, uh, why don't we close out with what we're looking forward to for tomorrow? What's what's on the docket for Wednesday? I can start. Yeah, you uh, I'm really looking forward to Super Mario Sunshine 120 Shines. It's tomorrow evening with SB Runs. I love that category. I'm a big Sunshine fan. Uh, that one's going to be really good. Keys, what about you? I'm excited for Sonic Advance by Kirby Master. Yeah. Yeah. I love Kirby. Always does an amazing job. And Kirby's in his name, and he never does a Kirby game. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Like, can we just, like, I'll, I'll let that go for a second. What, what are you That's super fun. I, uh, I mean... There are two people on this couch here who are going to be running a game tomorrow called Pokemon Emerald. Oh my god. And nobody oh. cares. Oh. Because what? What? Tunic what? from Sunny no. Muffin is tomorrow. That's, Gotta yeah. love Tunic. I'm going let's we're going back and forth with the cameras, man. Tunic, tunic, <laughs> tunic, tunic. I love it. We I, I'm just super looking forward to that one. But now you two are gonna probably do fine. It'll be fine. Oh, <laughs> it'll be a mess. Pokemon be Emerald a mess. will be a mess. In the best way. In the best way possible. <laughs> it'll be Chris's fault. <laughs> Excellent. Well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to the Red Bull Daily Recap. I have been ADEF, and thank you to Kizaron and J-Hobs for joining me. And everybody, stay tuned. There is more gaming coming up right after this. There's more SGDQ 2022. Don't go away. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to SGDQ 2022 live here in Minnesota. I'm so excited to be here with y'all. I'm Nuclear. I'm going to be your host for our upcoming run here, Mario Odyssey. It's going to be such a treat. Yes, I love it. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so excited for this run. We've got a fantastic runner, Ganon, for you, a fantastic couch. It's going to be a great showcase. Before we get started, I do have some donations for us to read. I have $25 from The Shaded Master saying, I must ask you, GDQ chat, are you hyped for this darker side run? This answer cannot be shaved for later. Yeah, thank you. I, I know I'm a lover of puns. Thank you, thank you. I also have $25 from Hinkle saying, so happy to see this event be in person again. Thank you for being the soundtrack to my life this week. And I couldn't agree more. It's, the energy here is unreal. We're going into, it's about 10 o'clock, almost 10.30 here in Minnesota. And it is hype as ever. I'm, I'm so happy to be here right now. I also have $25 from the sound offense saying, all settled in and ready for three hours of some nice, cozy Super Mario Odyssey. Good luck, Ganon. Donating for Wario to be the character for our upcoming Mario Party run. And that's a great reminder. We actually have quite a few bid wars open right now. Uh, one of those is Mario Party, which is our run after Odyssey. Um, and we'll be choosing which character Duck will be running as. Uh, right now, Luigi is in the lead, but there is plenty of time to change that here. Uh, Morio is very close behind, so, you know, you Wario lovers out there, or Peach even, get those donations in and make sure to put them towards your character choice. We also have $100 from Arrowbreaker saying, I heard we're doing limericks earlier, so there once was an Italian plumber. And those smart had foes who were dumber. When push came to shove, he rescued his love. And time for games done quick in summer.
So I have $100 from Kurt Mac saying, donating $100 for that Steam Deck because I didn't pre-order it on day one. So goodness knows that's the most realistic way I am getting one before 2024. And that's a great reminder, Kurt Mac, that your donations can go towards prizes. Be sure to check those out. We have quite a number of them as well. And as low as $5 can get you to enter in for a prize. So you don't even have to throw in $100 for that Steam Deck. I have $100 for Kane Kisargi saying, Luigi for Mario Party, duh. I have $100 from the other gym saying, my four-year-old Albert is super excited for Super Mario Odyssey run. He says, good luck. I also have $150 from Jack's Baby Pig saying, video games, good. I also have $50 from Captain Stitches saying, the only glitch I learned in Odyssey was DR's infinite jump <laughs> rope glitch because I could not jump rope. I suspect there are a few more in the run. Looking forward to seeing what moves and tech are included. Good luck, Ganon. I also have $250 from Chrono saying, time to do my GDQ dono. Thank you all for everything you do and keep up with the great work. Love the opportunity to help out a great cause. We have $100 from Craig Allenson saying, 3D Mario Run, take my money. And with that, we will be starting our Mario.